things we need to survive wasn't always easy. In the old days, we had to work hard and we had to work together. And sometimes it didn't matter how hard we tried. Farms became villages. And villages became towns. And towns became cities. We could stop thinking about making it through the winter. start thinking about other things. And other places. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We ran cables underneath the ocean put satellites into outer space. And everybody got connected. But as everything was advancing, we were becoming dependent on a new resource. You see, today, for the whole thing to work, it needs electricity. We need electricity to pump the gas that moves our tractors through the field and our trucks down the road. We need electricity to run our factories, to power our supermarkets, and to do the simple things that make a house feel like home. We need electricity to control and pump the water we drink to synthesize our medicine, put gas into our cars, and to light up all of the handheld modern technology that we've come to depend on. Which means that if something were to shut down the electric power grid, we, the people of the modern world, would find ourselves suddenly without the most basic things we need to survive. Everybody knows about how we are affected by dangerous weather on Earth. But not many folks know about how we are affected by dangerous weather on the sun. A solar storm is a star quake. It's a powerful burst of energy that comes from the sun. In the mid-19th century, we had the Carrington 
incident, which was a huge space weather impact on Earth. Literally the only electric technology that existed at that time uh, was the telegraph system. There were uh, sparks flying from the um, telegraph uh, systems, fires broke out. The new thing is not the space weather, the new thing is that modern society is so extremely dependent on electricity. Big storms like the 1859 storm are going to have continent-wide and planet-wide laydowns and impacts. The power grid could be knocked out for days, weeks, possibly months, even years. Well, you can't go to the transformer shop and buy new ones. Uh, you have to build them, and that takes several months, a year perhaps. The probability of a, a powerful storm occurring, let's say within the next decade, um, is uh, quite high. We know it's going to happen, but we don't know exactly when. And the sun isn't the only threat to our electric grid. In the old days, a terrorist attack meant Butch Cassidy was holding up the Union Pacific again. But in the modern world, the size and scope of terrorist attacks have been increasing. Nuclear technology is proliferating and unstable nations or terrorists who get access to it can create something called an electromagnetic pulse or an EMP. The nuclear EMP is uh, accomplished by detonating a nuclear device 20 kilometers and higher in the atmosphere. The effect of it is much more severe than a normal nuclear attack. That same single device um, that might uh, devastate a uh, portion of a city can impact a continent-sized area. A comparatively small country or comparatively small group could cause massive disruption. If there were an enemy that wanted to bring harm to the U.S., uh, it, it, it doesn't take much uh, to bring down the grid uh, using an EMP. By using a single nuclear EMP, our enemies could shut down a large part of our grid. But even without using a nuclear weapon, they could cause serious damage. We now have weapons that can uh, create an electromagnetic pulse, which you can carry around in a suitcase. A non-nuclear EMP, uh, if directed at um, uh, critical nodes of, uh, of infrastructure, could also create um, uh, very unfavorable cascading effects. And our grid can even be attacked without using any physical weapon at all. Theoretically, uh, a terrorist would be able to sit with uh, his or her personal computer in France and take control over the Swedish grid. EMP, space weather, cyber, severe terrestrial weather, earthquakes. We're talking about hazards that could bring down large areas of the power grid for long durations. Societies as we know them cannot survive those kinds of outages. Whatever the cause, if the power goes out and doesn't come back on, just about everything in the modern world would stop working. If we lose power for a few hours, it's kind of fun when people light candles. If you're without power for weeks or months or years, imagine years, um, it's almost inconceivable um, in the modern society. We open the faucet and we expect water coming out. It will not work. And then after a few days, the sewage will build up. You will not be able to stay at home. Entire distribution networks for food and, and medicine and everything that, uh, that an advanced society takes for granted every day. Hospitals will go down. Transportation will go down. Every gas pump runs on electricity. The breakdown of civilized society as we know it would be very rapid. If we don't have electricity for, for several days or weeks, um, well, modern society more or less collapses. This threat of both EMP and geomagnetic storms has been studied by the Congressional EMP Commission. As Chairman Graham noted, this is one of the few threats that could cause the military defeat of the United States. If the EMP Commission is correct, if the reports from DOD, from Federal Energy and Regulatory Commission, National Academy of Sciences, NASA, just to name a few, if those reports are all correct, then this represents a very grave danger to our society and our civilization. There's too much talk about, well, we mustn't worry the people. 
about this sort of thing. That's precisely what we need to do. We have to uh, get beyond the idea that it's imaginary and recognize that it's real. It's always hard to imagine at any one time that our peaceful and ordered existence is going to come under threat. When you look back at those times when they did come under threat, invariably, or almost invariably, they were not predicted long in advance. Throughout history, there has always been a moment in the life of every problem where it was big enough to be seen and still small enough to be addressed. That's the window we're in today. So in the same way we put our minds together to build this new high-tech world, in order to ensure its future, we now need to put our minds together to protect it. To evolve the grid to something that's more survivable, one has to protect uh, the major components. The 10 or 20 percent of things that we really need to protect, and then, of course, finding the engineering solution to achieve that kind of blocking technology. The government has got to also coordinate so that everybody uh, knows what they're meant to do when one of these events happens. This is not rocket science. It's not fear-mongering. It's being sensible about where we buy down risk against this whole class of threats. Uh, we understand the danger. Uh, it's fairly forthright to address it. The cost isn't out of range at all. When we went out and started looking internationally, what we found was rather surprising. Some countries have really taken some very significant steps in addressing these. So if we can share information, we're all going to be able to accelerate the process. We need the best ideas from the best minds throughout the world. This is a, a human scale problem that needs human scale solutions. I see great strides in Israel, in the UK, and now in the United States. The Prime Minister of the United Kingdom was asked whether he felt there was anything that had been left out of the national security strategy. The first thing he said was that he was worried about our vulnerabilities to EMP and solar weather. The United States has issued new guidance to the energy utilities. Israel has begun to uh, do some really serious work. We're starting to see the kind of leadership that's needed, but we haven't gotten near the threshold yet that we need to get to. Countries typically are poor at dealing with predicted threats before they hit. When you deal with threats of this magnitude, when you deal with threats that could bring down the foundation of modern society, you cannot tolerate even the first example of the threat. We have to use our imagination. We have to find a way to invest now in the tools that we're going to need when one of these threats happens. This is the only time when those tools can be built and put in place.